Hi everybody, it's me Jill and welcome to Jill Informed. This is the recap of The Real Housewives of New Jersey, Season 10, Episode 6, Bay Breezes and Bad News. Okay, we're still in Jamaica. It is the next morning. Teresa's working out at the gym. Melissa's having room service and cappuccino delivered. Dolores is on the phone with Dr. David. It's a weird, okay, first of all, she said, well, Jackie succeeded in having me wake up in a bad mood. Mmm, I think the bad mood is because you know you're wrong. I really do like Dolores, but I don't like what she's doing here. She knows she's not being nice and that she's probably not being fair. She just doesn't like Jackie. I get it. Jackie's a little bit tough to like. She's not like super warm and fuzzy and friendly, but she didn't warrant what was happening at the dinner the night before. Anyway, I don't know what Dolores is doing. She's telling David, what, what's with that shirt? I don't like that shirt, David. Listen, when I get home, say goodbye to that shirt. David, are you listening to me? He's driving. And this is the first time we see a side of David we've not seen before. Because he was not happy with that. He's like, Dolores, I hear you, okay? I'm trying to keep my eyes on the road. You know what? I'm going. Bye. And he kind of hangs up and she's just like, oh dear, hmm. I think that's her kind of trying to pretend nothing's wrong. Okay, so the ladies are in their perspective villas and talking about the night before a little bit and how they're just going to try and have a good time today. They're all meeting up to go swim with the dolphins and, uh, and, then, oh, and then the roast. <laughs> Dinner with Jennifer's roast is coming up later. So I hope that nothing happens during the dolphin thing so that everybody goes to the roast because I want everybody present and accounted for at that roast. Okay, the whole dolphin thing was actually pretty cute. The dolphin came and kissed them first and then he pushed them on a boogie board Jackie, my God, it, she looked like she was on a jet ski. The dolphin would like push your foot and you're holding on to the boogie board. And I don't know, it was cute. Everybody had fun, even Teresa. Uh, I'm not sure cause I don't know this animal. <laughs> okay. <laughs> she wanted to have dinner with the dolphin first. Anywho, now they're done and they are all splitting up. Uh, a couple of them are going to the gift shop. Some are going to get some food. Some are going, I don't know, they're going to meet back later. I don't even remember who's with who. Okay, so here's how they split up. Margaret and Jennifer went to the gift shop to get things to bring back home. Melissa and Jackie went to have lunch. Although, Jackie, you guys, I'm worried about her. She got, she, all she got was a little salad. Melissa got a margarita pizza and a salad. I told you guys before I was afraid this was going to be a thing, and I think it might be. She had anorexia nervosa, or I don't know if that's something you have your whole life or whatever, but she was in a good place and eating properly, like last all last season. But, um, yeah, I don't know. She does look thin, but, you know, they're all thin to me. So I, I don't know. Hopefully everything's okay there. And then the other duo is Dolores and Teresa, and they went to the spa. With Teresa and Dolores, Dolores actually said, you know, today was fun. I'm proud of you with the dolphins. And Teresa goes, <laughs> you always have my back. Were you cheering me on? And she goes, I was. I was proud of you. And, you know, Jackie did good too. Then we cut to Jennifer and Margaret. Jennifer asked how Jackie was doing the night before. And she goes, yeah, I mean, you know, she was hurt by it. But, and then Jennifer said, do you notice like something like going on with her eating? And Margaret's like, well, yeah, you know, she's got the eating disorder. That could just rear its ugly head at any moment. You know, she's under a lot of stress because of Dolores. Melissa and Jackie are talking about Teresa and Dolores, and, and Melissa said, listen, they were raised like that. You don't show emotion. And she goes, really? Oh, how sad. I was raised to be empathetic. Okay, you know, Jackie, that's not exactly what she's saying. If they get into an altercation again, her and Dolores, I'm very worried that Jackie is going to twist Melissa's words. 
you know. Well, I wouldn't want to be raised like you either, Dolores, not able to show emotions. Like, couldn't you just see something like that coming out? Back to Teresa and Dolores. You know, they're talking about Jackie and Margaret, and Teresa's like, yeah, Margaret needs to watch what she says, too, you know, because she knows what she's saying. And, like, the, how she is with Danielle, because Danielle is sensitive. You know Dolores wants to have Teresa's back, right? Dolores is always, like, the soldier on the front lines for you, right, if you're her friend. She did it with Siggy. She's doing it with Teresa now. But Danielle might be where Dolores draws the line. <laughs> She's, I don't see that there's any way she is going to defend Danielle. It's interesting when we cut back to Jackie and Melissa. They're talking about the roast that night. And Jackie goes, let them come after Jennifer for a change. Is Jennifer going to talk about Teresa? That's what I would like to see. And Melissa goes, no, I think Jennifer like lives for Teresa and Dolores. She'll just come after the three of us. So she might be right. Oh God, I hope I'm not disappointed in this roast. I am expecting a hot mess and I want nothing less. <laughs> okay, we're back in Franklin Lakes. Frank Sr. and Dr. David are having dinner together. This is a bromance for the ages, you guys. David looks 10 times happier to see Frank than he did Dolores on the phone. Just saying. So uh, they're making a little small talk and David said, yeah, I wanna talk, talk about the house. And, and uh, Frank's like, yeah, uh, how do you like it? And he goes, good, I like it. And he's like, oh, that's great. Cause uh, you know, me and Dolores, I, uh, uh, the hardest part about this is uh, working with Dolores cause uh, she's a boss. And uh, if you could just get her to make decisions, that'd be great. And David's like, okay, I understand. And he said, uh, this, is, this, is gonna, this is gonna sound really bad, but uh, I think you and I need to double team her. Oh God, <laughs> you're right, that sounds bad. And David kind of gives a smirk and he said, uh, so uh, if you don't mind me asking, uh, like, uh, wh wh where are you two headed? <laughs> How exactly is that any of your business, Frank? And David goes, <sighs> and Frank said, you know, it's just, uh, you know, Dolores said she's not going to move into the house without a commitment. I understand exactly what you're saying, but she knows my first love is my job and she has never once given me any grief about it. So, you know, we'll just take it step by step. Oh, you guys, we're back in Jamaica and the ladies are getting ready for dinner. Everyone's putting their makeup on. We get a little taste of the roast because Jennifer is practicing in the mirror. Thank God I'm Teresa's sister-in-law because otherwise I'd be so boring. <laughs> yeah, and then she does a little Margaret. <laughs> I'm getting excited. Okay, everyone's all dolled up and beautiful. Everyone's in flowers except for Jennifer and Melissa. And they head down the path outside. It's beautifully lit up and pretty and they're at this table outside. Very reminiscent of the table they were at. Oh gosh, where were they last year, you guys? I can't remember. Wherever their trip was last year, remember the table outside when Tequila Jen came? Anyway, Tequila Jen is coming tonight. Yay! <laughs> She's gonna be so much better at the roast. Oh, well, I should have known. Bravo would tell me the answer. It was Cabo last year because everybody toasts and Jennifer said, I love an outdoor dinner. Although I shouldn't say because the last one didn't go so well. And yeah, of course the last one involved Danielle too. So that didn't help. Margaret basically said, you know, yeah, well that Danielle ruined everything. And Teresa goes, you two were so close. And Margaret's like, ugh. And she goes, you were at her wedding. And she goes, that was fake. She didn't love him. Teresa, when they walked down the aisle together, I thought they were in love. They, oh, I shouldn't say anything. And everyone's like, what, what? And she goes, well, I, she was with Marty. And Margaret goes, they're back together? 
No, no, I'm not saying they're back together. Well, they had sex. Everyone's like, what? Wow. When? I don't believe it. Why? Why don't you believe it? Marty's an idiot. No one believes it. Margaret's confessional, she said, all I know is a week ago she was engaged to somebody else and supposedly madly in love. Now, supposedly, she had sex with Marty. I don't believe it. I'm not buying it, Teresa. All I know is they had sex. <laughs> that was terrible. I'm losing my Teresa. Do you guys remember last year? I couldn't even do Teresa at all. I Every time it came out wrong. And so I feel like I got in a groove with her this season. I'm losing it again. Anyway, Margaret still denies it happened, and she said, I believe she wanted to have sex with him as one last-ditch effort, and Marty's too smart for that. I, I doubt that, but anyway, the deal is they're still living together in that house, and if Danielle wants that house, she has to buy him out for over $2 million, I guess, uh, or leave. So Margaret thinks it was her last-ditch effort to get him back. And then some Melissa... Somebody said, Margaret, would Marty tell you? And she goes, he would tell Joe. So they're like, get Joe on the phone. So she's calling Joe right now. But before she does, Jennifer says, you know what? I want to know how you guys got to be besties with Marty. Because he was so insulting. And yes, we get a flashback before your husband's in the pool. To him saying, Margaret's just jealous of Danielle because your wife's flat. She ain't got any. Oh, God. Yes, we all want Danielle's square tits. And then uh, they pushed him in the pool. <laughs> Wallet, cell phone and all. <laughs> anyway, Margaret said that Marty called and apologized right after that. And they accepted his apology and they've been friends. So anyway, she can't get Joe on the phone. So she calls Marty and he's like, what? No, she's got to pay me to get that house. So he's denying it. Margaret believes him wholeheartedly, but every other woman at that table by a show of hands thinks that he did have sex with her. Not in an ongoing basis necessarily, but that, yeah, it happened. Margaret's vehemently defending his honor. I, I have one opinion about this. Who cares. I couldn't care less about either of them. Now, Teresa's phone rings and it's Danielle. And Dan oh God. So this is funny. You know how I am about how people have each other in their phones. Danielle S with a big giant picture of her face. So with the picture, do you really need the last initial? I'm thinking not. Everyone's like, oh, he must have told her, and now she's calling Teresa. That's kind of interesting, but not interesting enough to get in the way of the roast that I am waiting on, people. Okay, so yeah, um, Marty just called her, and she did not sound happy, and she said, are you okay talking in front of the girls? Danielle, nope. Are you mad at me because I told everybody? What do you think? And she said... Yeah, because I'm not talking about this. Click. Yeah. Oops. So, yeah, little crack in that friendship, huh? Side note, nobody at that table is happier than Melissa Gorga. She's waving her napkin around. Ha <laughs> ha, you're in the shit house. She's okay, so Teresa feels bad because she never hung up on me before. Now, there is one tiny little piece of this that I actually agree with. Margaret, when she was on the phone with Marty, she said, Marty, Danielle's spreading rumors that you two are sleeping together. Okay, Teresa now makes the point that she wasn't spreading rumors. She told me, she told just me. And you, Teresa, told everybody. So... She had a right to hang up on you, you know? Anyway, that's just one small piece of it. But she feels bad and everyone's like, oh my God, leave it alone. Nobody at that table, like I said, 
nobody, not even Dolores, is defending Danielle. So Teresa is all alone with that one. Melissa said, oh, stop, Teresa. I'm done talking about Danielle. I want to get roasted. Come on. Come on, Jennifer. So Jennifer gets up, kind of stumbles. Okay, first I'm going to do a skit. Yeah. She's going to start with a skit, guys. I'm going to be super disappointed in this, aren't I? <laughs> I have built it up so much in my mind. Okay. <laughs> uh, well, we had the roast. Oh, you guys. It was boring. I mean... I'm gonna give this to her. She, it was pretty good. She did a good Teresa. She had mannerisms down and, and inflections and stuff. Um, I, it was just really safe, I think. They made us think that she was going in, in the wrong direction with Jackie because she said, I'm not obsessed with food. And Melissa kind of gave a look, but it, it ended up being more about like I'm smarter because I'm up here and you're down here and I have two degrees and you know so she, she didn't go to a bad place it it was really very safe and everybody laughed and everybody was a good sport about it so boo <laughs> no no I just uh I thought it was gonna go really really bad It was fine. It was cute at best. Wow, okay, so that even inspired Dolores to apologize to Jackie. So they have even agreed to just kind of go back to the way things were, let's forget this weekend. I said some things, you said some things, I didn't mean it, it was harsh, blah, blah. I don't know. But the end of the evening ended with them laughing and having fun. All of them. So to me, it just proves that it doesn't have to be non-stop fighting with each other. You know, that isn't even how relationships work. People that are fighting that much don't spend this much time together. And if they like each other, they don't fight this much. So it's unnatural to be at a constant level of like screaming and yelling at each other. It is tiring to watch that. So having a night like this, even though I am pretty disappointed with the roast, um, having a night like this is, is actually okay with me. It really is. All right, guys, we are back in Jersey. And we get quick scenes of all the ladies at home with their kids and their husbands. And then we see Teresa's house. And she's got a box of photos. And she's like, girls... Gia, Gabriella, Melania, Adriana. Come on, girls. I'm looking at pictures and we're gonna put them in an album. This turns out to be another really sad scene and I feel a little angry at this scene. I feel like it's a little gratuitous. You know, let's just trot out the kids and make them look at pictures of their dad. I don't know. Honestly, I don't know how I feel. In some ways, I feel like it's cathartic for them. I don't think they should never speak of him or look at pictures of him or remember him or something like that. But it was such a set up scene for, for Bravo that it felt intrusive, maybe. I don't know, Something's, something feels icky about it to me. Next is a scene with Dolores and Frank where again, Dolores is defending her happiness. Frank, I'm very content right now. Don't worry about it. And he's like, well, okay, Dolores. <laughs> I can't do Frank either. Okay, Dolores, I talked to David and I didn't get much of an answer out of him. Frank, it's none of your business. Either she's not content and we all know something she doesn't, or we need to just leave her alone. If she's fine with it, why does Frank care? Frank says to the confession cam that he knows when things bother Dolores and she just doesn't wanna address it. So you know what? Maybe he's right. 
But even if he is right, what are you going to do about it, Frank? It's her life. Okay, so now we are at Teresa's house. She tells us that that morning she got a call that Joe's appeal has been denied and the family attorney is coming over, James. He gets there. She also called Joe, her brother, to come and uh, to help her understand everything when, I guess, when James explains stuff. And Nono is cooking in the kitchen. Italian pork chops! I guess... I don't know. I guess they want us to believe that Joe Gorga didn't know yet um, because she tell he's like, so what's up? And she said his appeal has been denied and he made a face like he was just finding out. And he said, do the girls know? And she said, I told Gia. She was very upset and crying. And then I told Gabriella because I didn't want Gia to be the only one that knew and, and to be like alone with it. And then Adriana's too little, and she didn't tell Melania yet. And Joe said, well, you better tell her before she finds out from somewhere else. And then James said, yeah, I don't want to speak too loudly, but he's in trouble. Okay, so the way he explains it is he said they took their case to the lower courts and they denied it. And so their only option right now is to basically start all over again, bring it to a higher court, and lower courts have made mistakes in the past and they could, you know, just appeal to them to have mercy on them. But he said the problem is you're not bringing any new evidence to it and it doesn't look good. And Teresa said, how long could that take? And he said, months. I mean, you're, it's like you're starting all over again. And it doesn't look good. So Joe's like, oh my God. And the attorney said, immigration is the hottest topic on the planet right now. And Joe is caught in the crossfire of that. Joe says to him, well, what are his chances of coming home? And he's like, not good. And he's like... 70, 30, 10%, 10% chance of him coming home. And the attorney said, significantly less. Teresa's like, oh my God. I Teresa's done with him. I really believe that, you know, mentally. I think she's, she is done with him. But, you know, the kids. She said, I had four daughters with him and I didn't sign up to do this alone. And Joe keeps calling me and saying he's so sorry. He let the family down. Yeah. The attorney said he's scared. And she said, I'm scared. And then Joe said, okay, let me ask you something. Like, why continue to fight? You are burying yourself financially with all all the bills of this and Teresa said I know I know it's crazy but his his daughters want him to fight and oh my god I get it Joe is trying to tell her listen if there's no money you raising these four kids is that much harder and that you really need for their sake you need to like think about that having money for their future I mean he's right I don't know what kind of money Joe can or will make in Italy, but I mean, it does seem like it's pretty much on her now. In Teresa's confessional, she said, I understand what my brother's saying, but I've been through financial strain before. I had to pay back taxes and I had to pay off all our debts. How can I put a price tag on my daughters having their daddy home? Oh, uh, it's heartbreaking. You know, Joe's like, listen, sometimes you have to understand that, like, it's not going anywhere and you have to move on. He wants her to think like a business person. What I said before about I don't think she's in it for herself. Like, I don't think she's super heartbroken. Like, the love of her life is, ha is moving to a another country. I think she has already moved on. So, honestly, that makes her an even better mother that she's so torn up about this because she's doing it just for them. It's really sad. I'm really sad for the girls who didn't break the law. That's who I feel for. And on that happy note, this is where this episode ends. <laughs> yeah. 
All right, guys, thank you so much for joining me. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Please give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. And don't forget to leave a comment. I'll be back next Wednesday at 1 p.m. Central Time for the next recap of The Real Housewives of New Jersey. Bye.